this book was hot garbage situation together <laughs> situation like if he was in front of me i would have like just tipped him into the koi pond or something like that i will i will pay you to read this i may not have money hello hello and welcome to a new video in this video i'm going to be wrapping up the books that i read in january so i will be telling you the books that were awesome the books that you can miss the books you can hate read if you want or the books that like i don't i don't know i will i will talk to you about them and tell you what i think but <laughs> essentially i read 18 books <laughs> in january because um i felt like this month went on for way too long it was a really long month that just refused to end um but now it's over we're in feb now so that's great it's the shortest month I am going through things guys. Anyway, um I am going to talk to you about the books as I've said, but before that, if you are interested, Stats bitch is back and she can give you stats about my reading for the month. So if you want to stick on and and watch that part, sure go for it. If not, then you can just skip on to when I start talking about the books. That's totally fine. I'm sure Stats bitch will not mind. First of all, I totally mind. I mean, you had me missing for months on end you could not find me in the mess that is your room and then you say that i don't mind if you skip my part what the hell anyway this month smithy read 18 books which is pretty damn good and the number of pages that she read was 4216 which is also pretty good but the average page for each book was 234 pages so that's not bad because she read an entire series that was about 200 pages ish so that must have got like her average down but that's fine um she read total four translated books which is good which is i appreciate it translated books are good and the genres that she read were quite a few so you can see them all here but uh there were seven fantasy books which was all part of one series that she read uh two contemporary two romance one manga one mystery one thriller one classic one short story one magical realism one non fiction and then there were more which i am not going to get into so like you can just see the graph here and be happy with it As for star ratings, I feel like she's had quite a mixed bag this month. Um, she's had three five stars, which are good. However, she's got two four point five stars, three four stars, two three point five stars, two three stars, but five two point five stars and one two star. Um, I think she's being a little more stingy with star giving this year. So that shows in terms of the amount of 2.5 stars and 2 stars so let her talk to you about these books and uh why she gave those stars to them but uh that's all for now hopefully i will see you next month and she will not lose me again uh but i hope you all missed me damn stats bitch i'm sorry i lost you but i found you again didn't i but well anyway um i am now going to get into the um books that i read based on the chronological order that i read them um so yeah the first two books i read for a vlog um that was supposed to be my first book my last book of 2021 and my first book of 2022 however um i didn't finish the last book of 2021 in 2021 i finished it in 2022 so i'm just going to effectively count it for this year um and that book is this one which is the friend by sigrid nunez um this is a book that i had been wanting to read for a long period of time and i finally got to it thank god um and this one was surprising because i thought that this book was going to be about grief and about a relationship of a person um with a dog uh however it was more um i did not expect for it to be so much more about like literature um and the literary community and all of that as well which was good but also surprising um this was written in like episodic sort of way like it wasn't like a clear flow of things there was a flow of course but it it felt like sort of it cut from one like uh thing to another thing to another thing so i liked 
what it was trying to say but I didn't love it as much. Um, I gave this one a four star and you can see more of my thoughts about this book in that vlog. Um, the next book that you guys chose that I should be reading is this one which is Winter in Sokcho. Um, which is actually like, it's a really wonderful looking book. Um, but this is a book that is translated from French. Um, and it is a, a book about this girl in a town called Sokcho in Korea. Um, she is half French, half Korean. Her father is French, but like she never knew him, whatever. Anyway, point is that this French guy um, who is this graphic novelist comes to her town and stays in the um, guest house of sorts where she is the receptionist sort of person there um, and they develop this friendship. Um, and I don't know, I didn't quite like this book. I liked what it was trying to do in terms of like the atmosphere that it built I totally felt like I was there but this book didn't like really satisfy me in like the ending or I just I don't know if I completely got it or I loved what it had to say or do so I gave this one a 3 3.5 stars okay the next book that I read was this one which is the Hon Jin Murders by I'm not going to try to even pronounce the name, but you can see the name here. Um, this person is said to be like the Agatha Christie of uh, Japan. Um, and this one, I don't know what... I, don't, I didn't quite like it, but the concept sounded really amazing. It's basically a closed door mystery, which is essentially where um, the... <laughs> plot is that this guy and girl um, get married um, and they are sent to like this outhouse sort of thingy like another annex to consummate the marriage um, and then in the middle of the night they um, people are woken up by screams because like they think something's happening in the annex um, they try to go in but the doors are locked they finally get in and then they see that um, two of them have been brutally murdered um, and they're like how did this happen because like the weapon was outside um, and these people were inside so like how did anyone get out because we were all here um, so it was it's it's that sort of like story um, and then this amateur detective is called in to try to solve it and it's basically um, how he solves it um, and this was interesting to a certain level um, but also I don't like, like I didn't like the ending, there's a particular trope that is in this that I don't particularly like, um, so it left me sort of like dissatisfied towards the end, um, which sort of really brought down the rating for this book. Um, also the writing was a little like little little dated which is fine, you can deal with it, but like I just wish the ending um, really brought things together, but it didn't um, and there were yeah, just I, I, feminist stuff as well, which I was just like, okay, I mean, it's still like of, of its time and all of that stuff, but like it was just too far fetched for me. And I was like, okay, cool, but I didn't quite like it, and that's fine. It's just a me thing, so it's all good. The next book, however, I absolutely loved. My favorite book of the month. Holy shit. I think it's going to be top 10 of this year for sure. 100%. Just absolutely brilliant. Amazing. Never been done before. That meme just inserted here. Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular, never the same, totally unique. Um, I love this book so much and that is um, If Beale Street Could Talk by James Baldwin. This is a classic and it is a short one and it has been made into a movie which is like you can see the people here. Um, I think it's on Netflix and I do want to watch it um, super soon but essentially it's about um, this girl called Tish and Fawny. Um, Tish is, and and the guy's name is Fawny. They are in love and Tish is pregnant. However, Fawny is in jail for a crime that he did not commit um, and it's basically about their life and it's, it's about a few months or maybe a year in their life. It basically follows that but it goes in and out of like the past and like how their love formed and all of that sort of stuff. So it is a love story for sure, but it's more than that because it's about family and bonds because you get to know about Tish's family, you get to know about Fawny's family, you get to know um, about just how cruel or amazing they can be um, and just bonds between people, about friends, about just... Uh, 
just the people and the characters in the book and the bonds that they have are absolutely amazing i would um kill people for <laughs> some people in this book like i just loved um the way that they spoke for each other and the way that they were with each other it was just so heartwarming and brilliant and amazing and the lines in this book and the things that it spoke about about race and about police brutality and about all of these things are just still so relevant till today it's just uh, absolutely amazing please for god's sake read this book just read it i will i will pay you to read this i may not have money but like just god just read this book it is so good listen to the audiobook as well it is narrated by bani turpin and she's done such an amazing job with the audiobook as well so like definitely recommend <sighs> I just really love this book. Oh my god. And then you're going to judge me because then I moved on to a really weird like <laughs> manga which I had heard Mina reads um speak about and I thought that it would be why not you know like I I just I was flipping through it on my phone and I was like oh, okay it sounds interesting it was basically about um this girl who sweats a lot <laughs> and she works in this company that makes like luxury soaps and like perfumes and stuff like that like soaps essentially um and uh, there's this guy who's like the creator of these soaps and he is in love with her sweat and her smell like her smell on her so he's like for the company i need to smell you uh and then they develop a relationship <laughs> i know it sounds really weird but it was actually like okay the the guy was like a little too like oh my god just like very out there okay he was very excited as a human being like if he was in front of me i would have like just tipped him into the koi pond or something like that like i would not be able to deal with him um but generally he was also really nice like he also like understood her emotions she understood he understood like what she was dealing with when she had like insecurities and stuff like that so like it was sweet ultimately um but also it was weird so <laughs> i don't know why i read it but i read it. it was it was fine i gave it a 2.5 stars it was it was all right Next I read this book called Love on Lexington Avenue which is part of a series with each book following one woman um and all these three women um uh, were involved with this one man who died so the first one was a mistress the second one was the wife and the third one was the girlfriend so we are following the wife in this one um and essentially at his funeral they find out about each other and they make like this pact it's called the Central Park pact uh series i think um but yeah so they make a pact to say that they will look out for each other and make sure that they don't fall for douchebags such as this guy who they were all with um so yeah that's that's essentially the story we are seeing how this one woman falls in love with her contractor who is actually this uh super duper rich um guy like he's a contractor but he's like super duper rich and and really amazing and it's like grump and sunshine sort of thingy though she's not really sunshine she's just it's more grump and and normal human being so um, i don't know it's it's cute it was nice but it was very tropey um and i felt like we were just following all the tropes as it went along um and i it was nothing new um it was nice it was good time pass i gave it a 2.5 star and went on with my life I will still read the third book though. And then I continued to read uh what's it called romance uh and I read Paybacks a Witch by Lana Harper and this one is basically um <laughs> what could I say it's it's like it is set in a town um which is kind of like Stars Hollow from Gilmore Girls um and it is about four witching families that are from this town so there are four witchy families um <laughs> and there's a tri wizard tournament that is going to happen essentially where there's one house that doesn't participate they are like the arbiters they are the ones who like basically make sure that the tournament goes fine and are the judges um whereas the 
um, other three compete and the girl in question is from the Arbitros family. So she is coming back to town after 10 years because um, one of the families, the guy, the main guy from the family um, who will now compete um, is uh, her high school ex-boyfriend who dumped her very unceremoniously. So she has not come to town and met her parents and her family and friends for the last 10 years because like they don't leave town because of the witchy vibe stuff but she left and like I just I'm just like okay buddy like that's that's just like why would you leave and not come back for 10 years because of an annoying boyfriend that's just like I don't whatever it's just I don't get it um but anyway it turns out that her best friend who's also from another witching family also um, got together with this guy and he also dumped her um, and and broke her heart and then there's a, the third like the fourth witching family um, and there's a girl from there as well that also um, had a scene with this guy and um, was burnt because of him so they all decide to um, gather their resources and make sure that this guy doesn't win this tri-wizard tournament essentially um, and and that's basically the story um but also it's like bye because the girl um who's not the best friend the other girl and the arbiter girl like that the main character they um sort of have a situation together <laughs> situation uh because they're both bi and they decide to like that they have feelings which is great i i love bi rights but like this book was just um not the best. Um, I thought the writing was a little too flurry sometimes. Um, I didn't like the Tribus of Tournament aspect of it. Um, I really questioned a lot of the characters' like thoughts and and uh, just just all of it. Like, why would you? Why would you go missing anyway? Um, it just also felt very uh, like you could guess what was going to happen. So um, it was okay. I didn't particularly love it. I didn't particularly hate it. I gave it a two point five star and uh, let go of it. It and that's that's basically it i i don't think i'm gonna come back to this series so so <sighs> there's that okay i put on the light but uh the next book was also a five star read i absolutely adored this book it was amazing um i would highly highly recommend it, and it is shokcho's smile by i will not be able to pronounce the name again so i'm just gonna keep it here for you to see uh, but this book uh, was just absolutely spectacular it is a short story collection um, written by the author it is a debut collection and I was just blown away this reminded me of Jhumpa Lehri though like don't quote me on that but wow just stunning writing um, each story is quite large like 30 40 pages um and it talks about various different things and about basically it's about relationships and people but it's also about like political stuff and like social things that were happening in korea which i was not aware of um and they made me sob so much uh, like the main um story was fine for me i thought it was okay which is shokcho's um smile but then there was one which was called shincha shincha which i sobbed in um it was just so good the last two stories also tell you um the story of like this um tragedy that happened in korea in 2014 that i was not aware of that bts made like a song about and all of that sort of stuff like i did not know um but like it's just so well done and really portrays these people in just the most beautiful way um and talks about like their relationship and their grief and like just so much of grief so like trigger warnings for like a lot of grief y'all but like i absolutely adored it i thought that it was um stunning writing great characterization just um just such a wonderful read and and I, I will read everything from this author because I just think that this was so good and so well done so um highly highly recommend just wow uh <laughs> just really moved me I don't know like just really moved me but and the next book that I read was Indian Summer by Alex Vaughn 
Tanzilman and this was an amazing non-fiction book. Holy shit. If you guys are interested in um, India and South Asia in general and like the partition and what that happened and like the the British like regime um, and like colonization and just like how they left and Gandhi and just like, oh my God. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. But this was just such an amazing book and so well researched. Um, basically, we are following the people um, who were at the helm of the partition so we're following the Mountbatten's both of them um the main like Mountbatten um Louise Manbatten um as well as um Edwina Manbatten who is absolutely amazing I wish I knew more about her in general um then we're following Nehru and Gandhi on the India side Jinnah on the Pakistan side uh there's I just wish we knew more about Jinnah though because like there isn't so much information on Jinnah but anyway we follow like them and what was happening like in that summer before or that year before um the partition that actually happened the partition as you know happened um like well india and pakistan and bangladesh were partitioned um in 1947 so we follow what exactly happened then um who were the pe these people what were they doing um this book i annotated like a crazy person um the 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 what's it called the pink are uh, like all the things where you got to know more about the people it gave you more insight into the character of the people which i really really liked because this was like a first history book that i was reading that felt very like people focused um and i really liked that like i was like okay i like that I understood what is happening but I also have understood the people so I understand why they must have like taken these decisions you know what I mean um and this was just so eye-opening to me in terms of the people because there were some things that I did not know about the people who I looked upon in like a good light and then there were some people who I was just like oh okay I was just like there were so many incidents in this book that like I was highlighting that I was like constantly telling people about which oh anyway so this is a book that I would highly highly recommend um it is very easy to read um it just goes by really fast it honestly um I don't know it was just very well written um and is super easy to read so don't worry about anything um if you think that like it's it's a difficult subject to get into it it may be but it's very very interesting so if you are interested in like Indian history or just like about India in general or like Pakistan or like anything um this is a book that I would highly highly recommend for you to read okay next I read the worst book <laughs> of the year I think um and that is the Stranger in the Lifeboat by Mitch Album. Now, I like Mitch Album, okay? Like, I think that he, I don't know, maybe I've read him a while ago, so, like, I don't quite remember him as much, but, like, I thought that I liked him, but this book was hot garbage. Um, This book was basically him reading Life of Pi and then saying, what if I wrote this book? Um, and then he did that. <laughs> basically, that's what he did. He just copied the whole idea of Life of Pi and, and, and made it a book and made it about God, okay? And I was just like, guys, and it wasn't even good. I gave this book a two star. Um, I just didn't like it. It's basically following this, uh, these people who are on um, this boat, this lifeboat, because the ship sank. Um, and then they find this guy who, three days later, who comes onto the boat and says that I am god like i am the lord um and then then you see what happens and how they deal with that and all of that sort of stuff and we read this through journal entries that a detective has found um and then it's also the de detective story and all of that sort of stuff and it was just like i did not like it i feel like mitch album should have spent some more time on this i feel like should have just written his own damn story. This was Life of Pi, but bad. I don't know. I didn't like it. It was not good. Anyway, um, moving on because I don't want to waste my time on this shit. And the next book that I read is uh, The Disappearing Act by Catherine Stedman. And this was a book that I was really looking forward to because I thought that it had really good premise um, and essentially it's about this girl called Mia who is an actress um, and she comes to LA for like some auditions and stuff like that um, and at one audition she meets this girl called Emily and they talk for maybe like two or three minutes um, but then something happens and then they meet again but the Emily that comes back is like a different Emily and she's like what what the fuck just happened and she gets like really she's like wait what's happening so 
Um, I like this book because it felt like it was logical in terms of like the things that Mia was doing, I would have probably done as well. Like it didn't feel like stupid. You know what I mean? Like sometimes there are things that like people do in thrillers, etc. where you're just like, why, why are you doing that? Um, but the end did have that where like, it was like, why are you doing that? Like she spoke to the cops and all of that sort of stuff. So it felt like all like, Fine. Oh, the battery is blinking. Ah, okay. But anyway, uh, it felt it was good. Um, but then I didn't like the end and I didn't like the way it progressed. Um, I felt there were certain people in this book that like, I just didn't understand the reason for them being there. There were topics that were covered that weren't fully like spoken of in a good manner, I think. Um, and it was just kind of left. So I was a bit disappointed with that. Um, overall, I thought that this book was good, but not like absolutely amazing. I gave this one a three star because I think that it is good time pass, but not the best thing that I read. All right, my battery is blinking at me. So I'm going to say that the last series, last chunk of seven books that I read were the Wayward Children series that I read all in one day. And I have an entire vlog about it. So I will link you to that. There were some that I really liked, some that I didn't. Um, you can, uh, there was one book which I absolutely love, which is In an Absent Dream. I gave that one five stars. Um, another one I gave uh, 4.5 stars. One I gave four stars. And then the rest were all right. Um, this is a series that I'm definitely going to like go back to it is essentially about these children who go into like these Alice in Wonderland situations um, and uh, they go into these different doors which lead them to different worlds and then they come back into regular reality and um, have to like cope so they go to the school called the school for wayward children and we basically follow this um, all these characters and we see how they are progressing now as well as like the stories back then and there are different stories about that um, I really like this I thought that was really queer and lovely and I like the characters development and just all of that sort of stuff I like the way that Shauna Maguire tells these stories um this is going to be a series that I'm definitely going to read uh, but yeah that's that's basically it you can check out all of my thoughts in that vlog that I will link you to I just put it up I spent a lot of time on it so like do check it out um but I'm gonna go now because the battery's blinking at me so I hope that you enjoyed this uh give this a thumbs up subscribe blah 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 um and also like I don't know, uh, I, I, I don't know, okay, 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 bye.